Oh, another meltdown in the world of Formula 1. Now it's Formula 1 fans in general losing their minds. Our dear friends in the world of boring races, DRS, and dirty air are losing their minds over a NASCAR driver. Kyle Larson, the man who dared to suggest he might be a better all-around driver than Max Verstappen. The audacity, right? Who does this guy think he is? It's not like he's been successful with multiple racing disciplines or anything. Or wait, he has. For those of you F1 fans who might be a little bit singularly focused in your motorsports knowledge, allow me to introduce you to the world beyond the DRS and undercuts. Kyle Larson isn't just some guy who only turns left. He's a NASCAR Cup Series champion, yes, but he's also won the Chile Ball, which people are making fun of it because of the name of the event, but it's actually one of the hardest racing events in the world to become a winner. He dabbled in IndyCar, he's won the 24 Hours of Daytona, he's very good on road courses too, as if driving an oval track made you a, a worse driver for some reason, even though although races are way more competitive and it's way harder to find exactly where you're missing those extra milliseconds, I'm not even talking tens of seconds. But of course, none of that matters because it's not Formula One, right? I mean, it's not like there's any skill involved in wrestling a, a stock car, a heavy stock car around a track at 200 miles an hour with 30 other cars, clearly just child's play compared to the sophisticated art of following the car in front of you for 70 laps while complaining about tire degradation. And now before you start furiously typing about how F1 is the pinnacle of modern sports, uh, just why? Why is Formula 1 the pinnacle of modern sports? Other than it being Formula 1 and being the most popular, uh, I need an objective, an objective reason why F1 should be the pinnacle of motorsports. Is it because it's the fastest car over the course of a lap on a road course? Well, uh, according to the teams themselves, uh, Formula 1 is, is going to be about 6 or 7 seconds slower than, currently, than it currently is in 2026, making it not the fastest car over the course of a lap anymore. And, and also, if we include oval tracks because why not it is a form of motorsports if we include oval tracks uh, f1 is nowhere near indy over the course of a lap i mean indy is faster uh, even if you take even if you run the lowest wing settings as possible that are, they're literally possible on a, on a formula one car you're not gonna get anywhere near the lap times of an indy car on an oval track sure formula one cars are the fastest currently over the course of a lap on a specifically designed road circuit but it's not the fastest on every circuit and it's not going to be the fastest on any circuit after 2026 because of changes of regulations that are made to improve competitiveness which is something that IndyCar and American Motorsports in general have have always had which is They've always been competitive. Uh, is Formula 1 the pinnacle because of uh, technological developments? Uh, no. Uh, it's, F1 is very, actually very limited when it comes to innovations in technology because they want to improve competitiveness and they have to cut costs. F1 has been trying to cut costs for decades now. If teams want to develop something uh, for the future, they have Formula E, they have WEC. Uh, remember this guy, Sebastian Buemi, a former Formula 1 driver? He wasn't very successful in Formula 1. He's, most, he's more known for having his wheels leave the car during a race in China, I think. So he never made it big in Formula 1. But guess what he did after Formula 1? Uh, nothing much. He just became a legend in endurance racing. Winning the World Endurance Championship and the 24 Hours of Le Mans multiple times. But I'm sure that doesn't count, right? There's a whole world of motorsports out there beyond your bubble. And guess what? It takes immense skill to excel in multiple disciplines and forms of racing. That's exactly what Kyle Larson has done. Now, personally, I believe Max Verstappen is the best driver in the world currently. But if there's one guy who can say what he said and not be delusional is Kyle Larson. 
he is a really good driver. He lives for racing just as much as Verstappen does. And also, I want to make a more general point about Formula One versus motorsports in general, because it seems Formula One fans hate motorsports in general. Uh, I've seen a lot of people saying they don't want F1 to become Americanized. But then you look at what, what F1 fans want for the future. You ask them, what do you want for the future of Formula One? And they tell you, oh, we want more competitiveness. We want less dirty air. We want battles for the lead. We want championships decided on the final race. More overtakes, which is what IndyCar and American motorsports in general have been for decades. Everyone goes nuts when there's a battle for the lead in Formula One. When that's literally every IndyCar or NASCAR race ever. And also the circuits. Man, the, the, the tracks. Uh, F1 fans, you're going to hear F1 fans always saying, Oh, we want less runoff areas. We want more old school tracks. You want more old school you know, the circuits they currently race in America? Like Sebring? Like on Sebring, you would never get into get to Formula 1. You would never become a Formula 1 track. And I sure hope... It never gets touched by the, by the FIA for Formula 1 because they would absolutely murder that track, that bumpy old school track. They would kill it just to make it F1 ready. Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen, Sebring, Daytona, Road America, Road Atlanta, Long Beach. All, all of those tracks are so old school and these are all American tracks and yes, they're very American F1 fans will tell you they want more old school tracks with less runoff areas. And then they will say, I don't want F1 to become more Americanized. Oh, it would be great if F1 became more Americanized. That would mean more competitiveness. That would mean more overtakes. That would mean old school tracks, which is literally everything you guys have been asking for for years. You've endured years of terrible racing. I, I did too, because I'm an F1 fan, but the racing is one of the worst in terms of competitiveness. If you watch any other forms of racing on any country, really, in any context. So when Larson says he thinks he's a better all-around driver than Verstappen, he's not just blowing smoke. He's, he's basing it on his proven ability to adapt and win across various forms of racing. Is he better than Verstappen uh, in an F1 car? Probably not. Of course not. And is he better than Verstappen overall? Now, I would say no, I think Verstappen is the best driver in the world. Uh, but Kyle Larson is a, a competitive driver who's been extremely successful. And it's a good thing that he believes in himself, that he believes himself to be capable of uh, beating Verstappen, uh, which is considered the best driver currently. Could Verstappen hop into a sprint car, a stock car, and beat Kyle Larson? I mean, probably not. Verstappen is extremely adaptable as a driver, but... If you put it in a stock car and against Kyle Larson and give them an hour to practice, he's going to get defeated by Kyle Larson. The beauty of motorsports is its diversity. That different forms of racing require different skills. And the truly great drivers can adapt to multiple formats. So instead of getting angry at Larson's claim, maybe take a moment to appreciate the incredible talent it takes to be versatile in the world of racing. Or... Just don't keep living in your F1 bubble where the only racing that matters happens on artificially crafted circuits with more runoff area than actual track. 